Hi all, so this is a quick video of the new feature um, slash function um, that's part of Spring 17 release, uh, the declarative bindings. Now somebody um, basically contacted me off my website and said, hey Andrew, it'd be really good if you could do uh, a, a blog on the declarative bindings because they felt, and as do I, that this is probably one of the best features in the latest release. Now there are some nuances to it. Um, and I'll go through those and explain exactly how it works. Uh, but the first thing I do want to mention is uh, to jump into the Spring 17 release notes and it actually will detail exactly how it works here, but I'll show you that on the video. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm basically going to define which data sets up front uh, we're going to do this binding on. So the first one is what we're calling the opportunity account and I've pulled this or ingested this in from Salesforce directly. So I'll quickly show you the taxonomy of it, um, all the columns. And basically here we have an opportunity um, and an associated account. Okay, so here's the account name, here's the account ID, and you can see the opportunity name. The next data set we'll be using is this account details. Now I've used this as part of a couple of other videos here, um, but if I show you the value table again, you can see we've got the ID and name. So the first thing I'm going to do is just um, open up one of these data sets and I'm going to create a graph um, that's basically got just the account name and clip it to a dashboard. Okay, so I'm going to call this account name underscore account data set. Okay, and we've clipped that to the, the designer. Okay, and we'll just make it legible. Okay, great, and let's save this. So let's call this bindings test two. Okay, so we've got our um, data set with just that ID and account name here in a single lens. Now what I'm gonna do is just add the same, in essence, graph from that other data set, right? So we can come into our graph here and I might just make them a little smaller. And I'm going to choose the opportunity account SFDC, right? And then I'm going to group it by account name. Okay, we'll just make it descending by amount, just so it's relevant. And again, change the fit so we can see it. Okay, and you can see here, we've basically got those two graphs, right? So if I select uh, one of the accounts on the right hand side, nothing filters, and if I select it on the left, nothing filters either. So now what I want to do is just add in the new declarative uh, binding, right? So to do that, I'm going to come to these three dots up the top here, and I'm going to click on connect data sources. Okay, so a couple of simple buttons, we can close this out, down or click on a new connection. And here we first give it a name, so I'm just going to say account name binding. And then we choose those fields in each of the data sources, right? So here in data source one, I'm just going to choose account details, I'm going to choose name, and then I'm going to choose data set source two, and then choose account ID name, and press save. Okay, we're going to see this here, we can edit it, we can delete it if we choose to, and then I'm just going to close that. So now what I'm going to do is just click on preview, and we can see here um, that it facets across. Now let's just go one step further, right? So a normal uh, binding scenario would be, okay, so I've got an account, and maybe I've got a list of opportunities, okay? And when I select my account, I want to see all of the opportunities associated with that account. So let's just come into edit here. I'm just going to remove this graph and now I'm going to create another one just with the opportunities. Okay, so group it by name because this, remember the grain was opportunity. We'll sort it descending again. Okay, and we're going to plot this. Make it easy so we can see it. Okay, save that. And now we're going to go into the preview mode, okay? So now what's going to happen is we're going to click on Abbott 358 and you can see that the appropriate opportunity 
okay, for that account comes up. Now what's important here is, is that we're actually selecting a value within a row. Okay, so to explain this in a bit more detail, if I now come across to this graph on the other side, we know that as part of that row information, that it has the opportunity and it also has the account. But what's interesting is, is when I click the opportunity, it does not pass that selection over to the other graph. And that's in essence is because we're selecting opportunity and because we don't have an opportunity as part of this data set, it's not faceting. Okay, so let's, let's drill into this uh, a in a little bit more detail. So to prove this out, what we can do is we can come down to our little graph here. And what I'm gonna do here is just simply create a chart, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create it from um, the opportunity account. And I'm just gonna add the account name. And I'm also gonna group it by the opportunity name. Okay, so we've got two values here and I'll just select the amount, make it descending. Okay, so we've got two values. We've got the account name and the opportunity name and I'm just gonna add that to the graph. And again, make it so we can see it. Okay, save that. And make it previewed. So if I select that Abbott account, okay, we can see that those graphs are faceting. If I select the opportunity like I did before, we can see that this graph facets, right? Because it's on the same data set. But what's interesting is if I now come and select um, this opportunity up the top here, you can see that it's at, because we've identified uh, that specific account, we can pass that, it's passing that value across to the other graph. Okay, so in essence, just like we would do in a, in a proper selection biome, we can, we can define um, which fields come through and gets passed through, but with the declarative uh, selection binding, we have to basically click on the value um, that we would like to pass through. So just to go uh, one step further to kind of, to you know, identify this, what we can do here is come into our graph and create a new graph. And here what we wanna do is just choose the account name. Okay, so come into none. Okay, do a little refresh here. Might just unselect that opportunity. Okay, pop that open into preview. Okay, so we know that passing the the account here works on all of the graphs. We know if we select this opportunity, it doesn't come up into this graph in the top right hand corner. We know if we select or we have a grouping of both of those uh, accounts and opportunities uh, grouped on the, on the bar graph, it will actually facet this graph as well up the top. But now what I'm gonna do is, because this graph here is from the same data set as these other three, I'm gonna select Abbott and you can see that now um, it's actually passing that value through uh, to that other, data, that other data set. So basically, with the declarative bindings, you need to make sure that you are choosing the graphs um, that you want to pass the values through to, okay, or the, the dimensions that you want to pass through. And that's kind of quickly how it works. Um, if it's outside of that, so for example, you wanted to uh, click on opportunity here, but actually pass through that account ID uh, or account name um, through to this row, you'd have to dig into the code and actually uh, put in a selection bind here. So that's a quick overview of exactly how uh, the declarative bindings work. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Any questions, uh, feel free to leave them down below. Um, but even though uh, this, it's not as powerful 
uh, potentially as a selection bind. This is definitely very uh, quick and powerful for the business end user that you know needs to uh, you know bind a state, for example, across multiple data sets. So it makes it very quick and very easy. You can obviously add in more connections and um, multiple data sets to those rules as well.